Hey traders, welcome to another Performante podcast. This is episode 31. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode here for our daily dose in December, talking about more crypto news. In this podcast, we're going to be diving into a new crypto regulation in the United States that's uh, pretty significant. And uh, yeah, I'll let Nathan introduce it. Coming uh, hot off the press this evening, Friday, December 18th, 2020, we have some somber almost news coming out of uh, what's known as FinCEN Financial. It's basically a financial regulatory network, and they're cracking down on crypto. Basically, there is this golden term within the world of financial service providers called KYC, know your client or know your customer kind of interchangeable and basically that's the requirement to have a full set of information on your client where they live social insurance number all that kind of information it's called know your client pretty self-explanatory in that regard and basically this new proposal is going to demand that of all cryptocurrency service provider exchanges uh, which is a monumental shift before it's kind of only been required for margin for futures for kind of those higher risk products where you are borrowing money from that centralized entity but now we're basically going to see a broad spectrum requirement that everyone comply with yeah it's uh pretty unbelievable the amount is very low the record keeping limit that is the bare minimum is $3,000. So if you send any amount of crypto worth $3,000 or more, you're going to have to at least uh, have a record of it. And then there's going to be some um, regulatory process that you have to incur in terms to some level. I'm sure the exchange will have to do the heavy burden, but uh, they will know. And if it is greater than $10,000, it is sent to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. So you really are going to get cracked down. And um, yeah, it, it is just trying to create anti-laundering regulatory uh, issues. And, and, and it's going to try to target them, I guess, to some degree. But if you are not complying to all the regulatory processes right now, I think uh, this is going to... I think uh, not scare a lot of people, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on and and really understand for people living in the United States, I think. Um, but going kind of on to the next overall discussion, uh, it's an invasion of privacy, really simple and short. Um, crypto was made to be able to be your own bank, to be able to be free, free to be able to uh, be financially free, right? Be able, be able to travel with any amount of uh, assets, whether it be BTC, Ethereum, or you know Monero, if you're trying to be a little bit more uh, anonymous, I guess you could say, and um, you know they're trying to take that away, and I think that is wrong, and I think a lot of the cryptocurrency, uh, I guess not talking heads, but the uh, influential individuals in the cryptocurrency space, I you can definitely see on social media that they are not lashing out, but I would definitely say they are taking a stand for what they believe in, which I think is right. Yeah, I mean, we are seeing an absolute invasion of privacy. This is fundamentally against what the legendary Satoshi Nakamoto theorized in that initial white paper. He wanted the immutable currency and having this kind of regulatory framework provides such a barrier to that peer-to-peer -peer ease of exchange. And there's no longer that veil of relative privacy between users that contribute and partake within the cryptocurrency networks. And it kind of adds another step in order to, for it to be adopted, really. I mean, if people are using crypto peer-to-peer, -peer, like to actually purchase stuff, theoretically, that's not, that's not what's harmed. What's being harmed is the offload back to fiat, because it's when you have those transactions on exchanges, to sell, to take profit, or whatever it may be, even just to trade for a value grade of three thousand dollars, you're gonna be tra or your your transaction is gonna be logged in a report. Even if it's greater than ten thousand dollars, it's going to be written up and sent to that financial crimes enforcement network, FinCEN, and actually the first time I've heard about it, Department 
I guess would be the right word for it. But they're cracking down hard. They're taking down that veil of privacy that I think many cryptocurrency fanatics enjoy. I can't speak for everyone that partakes within the cryptocurrency community, but based on what we hear and what we talk to, it seems like quite a few people have basically not necessarily avoided paying taxes, but there's a, some misdirection going on within the niche. And that's all going to come to a crashing halt as the government steps in and requires this broad spectrum basically ban on any level of anonymity with cryptocurrency in the United States of America. And I think there's one consequence of this that I think is almost positive for the way that we look at cryptocurrencies is it's going to encourage hardcore hodling. It's going to encourage people to really hold on to it rather than transact in large amounts, have that report sent, be on the radar. I think it's going to force people to engage in that long-term game of accumulation and overall force people into that kind of long-term mindset where it's not about the quick buy and sell and have a report sent to the government. It's about the buy, the buy, the buy, and really stacking those sad. Yeah, I uh, I think I'm definitely bored on that one. Um, I think that there will still definitely be people who trade it for sure, because at the end of the day, um, there will be people people trading it. And it's not like, as long as you are keeping your records straight, it's not going to affect you in any way, because you're not trying to um, look for that anonymity or that privacy because you're doing something illegitimate or you're doing something illegal or um, you're trying to play the loopholes of taxes and um, whatever you name it, but it, it's definitely going to reduce the overall demand, I would say, and the overall volume even further for the United States because the U.S. already doesn't have, already has limited options for exchanges. For example, uh, the place that we live in Canada, we, we have the ability to trade on so many different exchanges. We have Binance, we have BitMEX, we have Bybit. Um, all these different exchanges that allow us to have significant liquidity, lots of volume, and that's really great if you are trading short time frames. But if you look at the states, if you live there, you definitely understand. Um, you're, you're definitely, um, you can, but it's definitely looked at at a different way than Canada where you can get caught and there are some repercussions. I'm like, can't, I don't even think Canada has any really, well, I'm not exactly sure. I feel like it's definitely a lot easier and I'm sure it is, but... Um, at the end of the day, for the United States, they have Binance US, uh, which they can use, Coinbase Pro. I, I don't really know what else would have enough liquidity for a short-term trader, but um, I definitely think that at this point, it's going to get even more challenging for cryptocurrency traders. And I think I might just switch to either them exporting to new countries that allow them to trade, but with COVID, we don't know. Or, the, or them just switch into a different asset class. So it'd be interesting. And I kind of have an opinion in, in, with, with, the, with the Fed. To some degree, the government wants people to use the U.S. dollar more because why would you not want the people of your nation to use the native currency? Um, if everyone is switching to cryptocurrencies, that's going to devalue the currency even more because there's going to be less people in demand using it overall. So, you know, you, you want to keep the entire nation using that currency because then you have c complete control you have the ability to print value so if you don't have that ability you don't have that power so um, i think they're definitely getting a little bit worried so it's pretty interesting to see them take this very seriously yeah and i think another inadvertent consequence of this is that it's going to push people to use privacy centric alternatives ones that have a higher level of security, higher level of anonymity, and are a little bit covert in the way they operate. Uh, just three that come to mind off the top of my head. Monero, that's definitely got a very long track record of being a stealth coin, let's call it. Zcash and uh, one of its derivatives called Horizon, one of our favorite forerunner projects. Those three are definitely more privacy centric. And I think in light of these regulatory changes, almost stand to benefit because they are more covert in nature in a world where we are seeing increased surveillance.
And just two thoughts come to mind when we are talking about U.S. regulations is with these convenience investing apps like Robinhood or Square, when people buy over $3,000 worth of Bitcoin through these proxy companies, are they going to have to report it? That's uh, very unclear with the regulation that's pushed forward because they're not technically owning it, but that's still a cryptocurrency transaction. And I think within the world of how the United States operates and accesses crypto, that's a very big gray area. It's Robinhood sees massive volume, PayPal sees massive volume, and they're really acting as on-ramps for the massive fiat to crypto transfer. So that's another interesting area that I think is really unclear right now, but in terms of its effect is really important to consider because that could change the dynamic of a lot of the retail investors within the space. And another point that comes to mind is, so if $3,000 is the point at which the exchange needs to record the information, and $10,000 is the limit where a report is sent to FinCEN, does that mean you could transact in $2,997 to kind of get around that loophole? Will that work over time? Will you get flagged? I feel like within the world of the crypto community, this is where a lot of people's uh, not trickery, but what's the word I'm looking for? Practicality and in, ingenious, ingenuity. 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 Brain's not working properly today. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see because crypto is nothing but solutions. And that's really what the I feel the crypto community is all about, is finding solutions to problems. And who knows, maybe there's some hoops to jump through to get around this new regulatory framework that we are seeing it is a massive crackdown and relative to how it's operating today i feel like exchanges would be on our side as well to some degree like they're probably taking the biggest heat because they have to do all the back end stuff send it to the organization in the department that's going to be checking it and validating it and keeping records of it and really they're the ones who are getting hit the hardest in terms of the the work that's going to be put into this new regulatory law that may be passed so um, I think if <laughs> it'd be pretty funny if they like low key write emails out to validated customers and say, just send $2,997 20 times or however many times you want to send it. Um, it'll see, it'd be interesting to see how they react, but, um, now that would be cheeky. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I feel like that would get caught. One email would leak and then it would go all, it would be, uh, 100%. From there. Yeah, wouldn't be worth it for them, I think. <laughs> but it'd be funny. It'd be a good story. But I think one thing that could potentially be uh, starting to erupt or definitely start to emerge in terms of popularity, in terms of usage, so that's going to be creating even more volume, which is great because a lot of people look for liquidity. If they're short-term traders, they want the reassurance that there's going to be a buyer or seller on the other side of the trade. And uh, these these types of situations um, are, are very key um, if you're a trader because you need to have that reassurance because if you're trading with very low volume, you're basically screwed. Um, so if there is a mass flood towards, for example, local Bitcoins or other peer-to-peer -peer crypto fiat or crypto exchanges, um, we could see that start to emerge and become a very popular place for the crypto community to interchange different assets because um, right now cryptocurrency exchanges are dominating coinbase just had their ipo we talked about it binance i i don't even know um, how much the, the valuation valuation of their company could be worth if they were to ipo but unbelievable amounts they're huge they've like they're like the amazon of the cryptocurrency exchange space they're taking over globally it's pretty unbelievable the rate at which they grew but um we could come to a point where that slowly diminishes because at a certain point they become almost like banks um so then the focus of cryptocurrencies at its infancy would be stuff like DeFi or local bitcoins or other peer-to-peer -peer, uh transaction um ecosystems that allow people to connect without a third party or a entity to validate that transaction. We just run it 100% through smart contracts, which would be a very cool future.
Yeah, I really think that those peer-to-peer -peer networks, like you said, have a bright future in light of these possible regulations that are coming into play because they almost circumvent the regulations and a little sneak past, if you will, because there is no formal third party facilitating it. Hypothetically, there's no reporting to be done. So I think in addition to those privacy coins that we talked early, earlier about, uh, decentralized exchanges are also in a particular position to benefit as people are seeking the more covert mechanism to exchange and trade. But ultimately, that bottleneck still exists of exchanging those coins back into fiat dollars very tricky unless it is done through something like local bitcoins you have that wire transfer down through escrow a lot of different options can even facilitate it through paypal but at the end of the day it will not be as easy as it was before so one quick suggestion solution to fix all of these problems come to canada very easy <laughs> simple as that we got lots of room up here we got like four people per square kilometers something crazy like that we got lots of room we got cheap electricity cheap cooling if you want to do a bitcoin mining farm just move up north lots of options to keep you entertained regular regulations for crypto aren't as bad there's pros there's cons but ultimately might be better than america yeah i to be completely honest would have to agree um, good for crypto enthusiasts, I'd say. You have Binance, a platform that basically has the best liquidity out of any platform um, that's available for anyone. And there, there might be some platforms in like the South Seen, the Southeast Asia area. I don't exactly know what the uh, volume is over there, but a lot of options. Mining, like Nathan said, electricity super cheap. It's cold, so it's not like you have to um, keep them extremely cool with some method. You just, you know, stick them next to the igloos, next to the polar bears, and you're good to go, right? So uh, yeah. it's a little bit Bitcoin more Bitcoin mining in an igloo, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit more civilized. Maybe people have fi finally come to terms, but um, yeah, it's a good place to live. If you're ever worried about uh, the United States crumbling, we've got lots of space. And uh, if global warming is just continuing, we're going to have more space because there's going to be less snow. So it will be it will be available for a while. So I think uh, that's a good way to end the podcast. Went, went over a bunch of different stuff. It's pretty big news, especially if you are living in the United States. We did go over some, not options, but like if you're sending $2,997 or if you're transacting... Um, into a privacy token like Monero, Zcash, or Horizon. You know, those are some options, but at the end of the day, if you are able to um, abide by their regulations and jump through all their hoops, you technically will not really be affected by this. So um, that's going to be the summary of the podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in, and uh, I'll pass it over on to Nathan to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in to our latest episode happening on December 18th, reviewing that breaking news concerning crypto regulation. Wish you the best. Stay safe, everyone.